very calmly tonight mtu akusikia atasikia tu <laughs> mtu ambaye si wa kusikia hasikiangi <laughs> there's no message you can preach that can change Judas from his mission There's no miracle you can perform that can change him. He has priced the Lord. And any time Jesus speaks, he sings the 30 pieces of silver. <laughs> May the Lord grant us great understanding tonight. Can I hear an amen? amen? May the Lord give you great understanding amen. of the things I'm going to share with you tonight to the glory of his name. Uh, I want to share a few things before I get into the mother scripture for tonight. But I have also learned that we will not always finish what we intended to share. In a whole sermon, there may only be one word that will turn around your life. It may not be all the messages, just one word that will turn around your life and give you that which you desire. Now, I want to begin by saying that we can, as much as God is our God, in a number of times when we come to him, we say our God, our God is able. We have come to worship our God. But there is also something I have learned about God. That based on the obedience of men and the way men transact with God, God can endear himself to a place, to a person, in a special way. God can be thicker in a place than he is in other places. I have learned that we can bring an aspect of God where we are in what we do that makes the difference with other places. I have come to conclude in my walk with God as much as there are statements like, you know, God is for us all. You know, God is not partial. You know, God doesn't prefer one over another. But as I study the word of God and as I walk with God and as I look at the counsel of God, I've learned that God is the God of men. It is something you will never understand. How God will endear himself to one man more than other men. May I find a man here that God will endear himself to more than he endears himself to others. God can be present in a particular place in a way he's not present in other places. God can allow himself be thick in a place in a dimension he's not thick in other places. If you want to think it's just a word, that's why he chose Israel. He didn't choose every other nation. But he picked one nation and endeared himself to that nation. And even under the new covenant, despite the teachings on grace, even under the new covenant, even today that we say Jesus has died for us all, still there is a way God is 
pick on some men than he is on other men. He's the God of men. May you be that man. God still comes to places because of a man. God still preserves men because of a man. God still blesses men because of a man. No matter what anybody will teach you. Oh, you know, you are also a servant of God. Don't let anybody show you anything. Sir, God is still thick on some men than he is on other men. There are men that you have 40 days of prayer. Is their single minute declaration. God still does that. May you be that man. I pray, may you be a man of God that men can run to and say, if I can meet this man, my needs will be met. If I can meet this man, heaven will hear me. That's why we come to church. One of them is not just to worship. God is still thick in some places. God is still thick on men. I've learned that no matter how born again we are, no matter how much we pray, no matter how much we speak in tongues, still there are men that are custodians of a certain dimension of God that if that dimension of God will be revealed to you and will become a reality in your life, you need to meet those men. God has put it like that. As Paul is speaking, he asks a question, are all of them miracle workers? He says, Can, are all of them prophesying? He says this in Romans that he has given us grace. Or rather, he said, if a man prophesies, let him prophesy in direct measure to his level of faith. There are men who speak over continents and it comes to pass. There are men who can't speak over three people and anything happen. They are all servants of God. Put it there. That if any man will prophesy, let him prophesy in direct proportion to his level of faith. Which means there is what one man can say and you'll see it. And there's what one man will say and you'll not see it. And they are all speaking in the name of the same God. May you be the man that can be identified with a particular aspect of God. A particular dimension of God. May a particular dimension of God find an embassy over your life. Find an embassy over your house. Find an embassy in your car. Find an embassy wherever you find yourself. God still carried by men. I begin from there. Cornelius is praying and giving. Praying and giving. Praying and giving. He's not giving to a man, he's giving to God. And then an angel is sent from heaven, comes down to him and tells him, Cornelius, send men to a man. He's lodging in Joppa. We know his location. Don't go any other place. He's a man called Simon Peter. This thing you've been praying for for many years, if that man comes, your prayer will be answered. I pray that Men of God, don't just be, we are in a generation, don't just be a preacher. We are in a generation, be a man of God. Don't just be a pastor, be a man of God. Don't just be Jalemo, don't just be Muombaji. It's an insult, be a man of God. The man heaven sends you to. Send men to a man. Call Simon, he's praying. It is praying men that are sought after. It is in your prayer that heaven tells men to look for you. When they go there, you spring. Send men for him and let him come. You may not know what you have been praying about, but if that man comes, he's an answer to that thing you are praying about. I came to tell you, men of God, may that aspect not leave your life. May your arrogance not blind you to that. No matter your level of calling, there are men that are answers to your life. 
There are men that were born to turn around your life that God has called. There are men that carry a certain dimension of God and you, may, you must not commonize them because they are not ordinary men in your life. Look at this. Look at this. Let's look at it as servants of God. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Having then gifts that are different according to the grace. Gifts are backed up by something called grace. And they cannot be the same. Having then gifts that are different, the difference is grace. Grace that has been given is the reason men manifest differently. There are men that are not preaching healing. They have become healing. Their lives are an embassy of healing. A man, of, a, 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 a man was wheeled into a healing meeting. Over a million people were gathered. He was broken everywhere. He was on a stretcher. Hands broken, feet broken, backbone broken. A man of God walked in that we can call a healing minister. The man that was broken was giving a testimony that when that man walked in, I didn't feel the anointing. I thought Jesus walked in. I felt love I've never felt all my life. And every bone in my body was like asking each and every bone, what are you waiting for? Bones began to look for each other. Because a man walked in, he has not said anything, he has not spoken anything, he is not a healing minister, he has become an embassy of healing, he carries it, it has become part of his life. When God wants to heal men, God sends him. We are not called to preach the gospel, we are called to embody mysteries. There must be a mystery you embody. You must become an interpretation of God in a certain dimension. The apostle John said, now I'm coming back to this, having then gifts differing according to the grace uh, that has been given, not that will be given, has been given to us. Let us use them. If you are prophesying, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Brother, don't comment against a man on Facebook. You are a man of God. You are believing God for sure. The man is telling you God has just given him his 27th jet. You are all men of God. But respect lanes. There is something called faith. There are men who have become certain truths. They have become certain realities. They are not preaching it. They have become it. We are fighting to get there. May you find the truth that was written about you. And may you become it. When Jesus came to the temple. He was given a book. And he located a place in the book written of him. And when it was read. Every eye turned and looked at him. Men read scripture. But it was a reading that took the attention of the gathering. They looked at him and he said. This day, this word has been fulfilled because every man has a word and that day he read that which is written of him. May you not die outside your prophecy. May you not die outside what was written about you. May you not just scratch it. May you become it. There's a place I'm taking you tonight. Look at this. Look at the good news translation. I'll slow down a bit. So we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith. Don't say things that are beyond your faith. To the faith that we have. Now listen. The Apostle John said <laughs> that which we have heard and we didn't only hear, which we have seen, 
He said, we didn't only see which we have handled. And he said, that which we handled was the word of life. That the word of God must go beyond what you hear. It must go beyond what you confess. That there are mysteries in the scripture that must go beyond what you hear, beyond what you hear being preached, beyond saying amen, and come into place where you handle it, where it becomes a reality in your life. My God shall supply all your needs. It's not a promise. Listen and listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not a good story about David. The man is talking about what he experienced, what he touched, what became a reality. When he's speaking, he says, I was young. Now I am an old man. If I saw, I would tell you, I've never seen the righteous man forsaken. And there's one thing I've never seen, not only him begging. He had something that his children didn't beg for bread. I have never seen from the time I was young until I'm now old. I've seen it in my life. A righteous man cannot beg for bread. It was an experience. That which we have had, put it there. That which we have seen. That which we have handled. Declare we. Now, which means there are men who have handled what you are reading as a promise. There are men, what is a dream to you is not a dream to them. It's a reality to them. May you become a man that some things will become real to you. And one of the prayers I pray to you as a minister, that when you leave this conference, may money stop being a confession. May money become real in your life. I want to show you how. May you not just draw dummies and put them on the wall. A dummy that has been on the wall for four years is not a dummy, you are the dummy. May you not just collect cars and put on top of your radio and say, I'm believing God for this. And seven years down the line, the child that was born while you are putting that thing on top of the radio is going to school. He's asking the mom, what is this? He's saying, that is dream. It is not a dream. There's something you need to become. There are men who are answers to prayer. May you be one of them. I want you to push to a place of grace where those that you pastor know that you are not an accident. You are an answer to their lives. When Moses came, he didn't negotiate with Pharaoh because he was an answer to the children of Israel. May God send you from this place with something on your head that wherever you preach, that man of God will call another man of God and say, you need this man. He came and made my work light. May you not become a contribution project where members pity you and gather to buy you a car. Can I say it with all humility? And I didn't say it is wrong. How do you drive a car that some people were pushed for contribution until they left the church? Trying to buy your car. How do you drive it to their houses? How do you feel? Which faith do you preach to them? Let me tell you. I can't gather all these pastors here. I'm aware there is something from him using the instrument of a weak human body to get to you. You will never be the same. Yeah. Now listen to this. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. That the word can be handled. That you can walk back and men look at you and see the truth of the word in a particular dimension in your life. That men can say, if that is what you are praying for, call this man. Paul falls from the horse, becomes blind. Jesus comes to him directly and Jesus is talking to him. And he asks Jesus, what do you want me to do? And Jesus tells him, there are things I've given men, I cannot tell you. Get into the city. And you will be told. 
the man God sends you to. Get there, you will be told. I will not tell you what I've told a man to tell you. And God comes to the man and says, don't fear him. He's a chosen vessel of mine. The man that is being sent to come and speak to him is afraid of him. God has to speak to the man that you see, you have to go. He's a chosen vessel of mine. And you have to tell him what he must do. Cornelius, send men to a man. When heaven endorses some men, be careful. The world doesn't understand it. Shallow Christians don't understand it. Why should people kneel before another man? Because they don't understand. There are men God has built into an altar. There are men that ate in Abraham's home and barrenness was destroyed. They said we didn't come to pray. We came to eat and tell you get ready for a child. Abraham, you are walking with God, but we didn't come to encourage you. The Bible says there were men. We will come back. A man walked into the Shunammite woman's house and told the woman, when I come back, you'll have a child. A man went to Zarephath and entered the widow's house and told the widow, till the day rain will come, you will not go to the potion mill, but you will not run out of flour. You will not go to any refinery. You will not run out of oil. As long as I'm here, it will not end. They are men. They are men. The honest, honest creation awaits, groans in pain, waiting the manifestation of men. take away your peace until you become an embodiment of truth. Amen. May you not do church as usual. One time a man come, came to my office and he talked like he was threatening me. He said, Pastor, I'm not a good man and I don't give. Nobody can eat my money. Pastor, my money, I'm not a good man. I don't want to lie to you. I don't give. There's no pastor that can convince me to give. But <laughs> I brought you this 100,000. Pastor, I want to give it to you, but I will come back. He has already told me he's not a good man. Pastor, I will come back because what you preached is what I'm going through. But I'm giving you this money. I will come back. We go for duties. People are rewarded. I'm never rewarded. I don't know what is wrong with me. People are given five million, three million based on their mission. I, I have never received it. So I brought you this. No pastor, I've never given, no pastor can eat my money. I'm too intelligent for that. But the way I had you, I have brought it, but I will come back. <laughs> we have a mission. I'm giving you this money. You know, there are people that talk to you. If you don't know God, you better return the money. <laughs> because you don't know what will happen. Yes, you better return it. Yes. I looked at him and I smiled. He went to the car and wrote a check of 100,000 and brought it and smiled. And I told him, go. This time, it will never be the same. And he went, came back, he was called to the big man's house. Others had been rewarded. And the big man came down, was going to the gym and threw something at him. When he got to the car and he tore it, it was five million. He said, Pastor, I need to bring another one. This thing can work. I came to tell you, don't be a preacher. I am not a preacher. No, don't be a preacher. I'm a man of God. Build something without being crafty over your life that men can recognize. The world has no place for losers. Don't live with the widow and begin to pray for provision. That mama, we are believing God today to Takunyo Awuji. That was not Elijah. Say, this is your last meal. Go and cook it, bring it. I'm going to eat it and it is the end of drought. Drought will be outside except your house. Zarephath is not far from Samaria. It is within the same the same, the, 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 the same, same, there are different cities in the same country. For three years, government was looking for Elijah. And he was in the house of this widow. And this widow had a son. And Elijah used to come out. The GPRS of government could not, could not pick the man. The child could not talk about it. The neighbors could not see him. But he was living there. Because he was a man of God. 
There was drought everywhere. The widow could not feel drought because a man of God was in her house. Listen, there, there is drought in ministry because what you carry cannot stop drought, so you suffer with them. I speak over you by the grace that hangs on my life. That when you leave this place, you will not just be a pastor. You will be a man of God. If you enter a place, luck will end. Barrenness will be broken. Your ministry will be an embassy where the needs of men are met. Men will not count it a loss to give to you. They will count it an honor to give to you. Because something will hang over your life. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Drought ended. Because a man of God was in the house. Write a few things down. And Potiphar looked at Joseph and saw that God was with him. Potiphar was not born again. He was an idol worshiper, an Egyptian. They were under the domain of gods. But a man under the domain of witchcraft looked at Joseph the Bible says, and he saw that God was with these young men and that everything that these young men did prospered because God was with him. He carried something that mocked the fact that he was bought. There are men you can't buy. There are men you can't buy. There are men that are more than... The <laughs> Potiphar bought prosperity. He didn't buy a slave. He bought prosperity. He perceived, he concluded that God was with this young man. I pray for you, dear ministers of God, that after this conference, that you and I, that men will just say that this man has God. That there is something on this man that is different. That there is something on this man. Listen, we are in a generation that men don't just give. People have been duped. People have been taken advantage of. All kinds of sarakasi have happened in the name of God. So if you come up with let's give, if people don't just want to hear that. There, there has to be something on you. Now, look at this. He saw that the Lord was with Joseph. Please put it there. He saw that the Lord... I'm running very quickly so that I drop a few points and get out of where we... He saw... He saw that the Lord was with Joseph and that everything he touched prospered. And Potiphar realized that God was in his house because a man that has a connection with God was in his house. He didn't need to pray, but he was prospering. Please, it may sound arrogance. It is not arrogance. It is not pride. May some prayers end when some people meet you. It is so bad when people you are pastoring are praying and you are praying. Uliingia kwa nyumbani, ukaanza maombi wanakusaidia kusukuma maombi. Unaomba na wanaomba. One time there was an, a need. I believe in Oroy Roberts University. And Idahosa was in Australia. And he flew in. And they were fasting and praying. It was a serious need that they were praying about, that was threatening the existence of the university. And Idahosa told them, you people have prayed, let Idahosa pray. It's a place in God. One time Papa Serula was preaching in Nigeria and rain began to rain and Papa Idahosa looked at him and said, Dr. Serulo, this rain is raining because you are the one preaching. If Idahosa was preaching, it can't rain. It's a place in God. You know how he stopped the council of witches gathering? He to, the, the senior witch said, this meeting, not even God can stop it. He said, ah, I didn't know. You have reminded me. He told God, please don't come in this matter. Leave these men to me. I will handle them.
I don't know how much it pains you when people come to you for prayer. People should not be coming to you for prayer. Allow me to say with all, it is an insult. You are shaking your head, Baba. Sasa ni namini. I agree with this lady. Jehovah. Jehovah mpatie mtoto. My Jehovah. Manata batata. Usiaibisha mtumishi wako. I pray for a child. Oh God, the woman begins to cry. You join her in the tears. It's an insult. Prophets don't do that. Leave that for pastors. Men of God don't do that. Men of God speak. And you can't speak if you didn't pray for long. The longer you pray in the private, the shorter you speak in the public. You are not sent to pray for them. They should get to a place where they say, I knew if I see you, it is over. May the Lord charge us. May our batteries be charged. We are suffering because we have become prayer projects. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. He didn't write a letter for promotion. Look at verse 4. So Joseph found favor while God was with him. All these things we shout about favor, favor, favor. It is nothing but the presence of God on a man. Look at this. He found favor in his sight and he served him. Then he made him overseer. No application letter to be made overseer. He made him overseer of his house and all that he had, he put under his authority because the man had God. People don't trust you with all they have. Just like that. There's something that makes men trust you with all they have. Where you are is not, is not poor, is not dry. There are no dry places. There are only dry men. Several times I've seen pastors tell me, man of God, you don't understand our ministry. We have done everything to raise money. It is not working. I tell them you have done. Now let me come. Some even tell me, man of God, you need to understand this is a town outside. I say it's not about a town. It's about heaven. So long as it is within the network coverage of heaven, I will come. May God give you a certain boldness based on what you have experienced. I didn't come to tell you I'm different from you. I came to tell you, you can build a grace over your life. You can build a grace over your ministry. It is intentionally built. You can meet me next year and tell me, man of God, as I am coming, I'm bringing 10 million to you. You can build it to a place. It is intentionally built. It is your choice to stop being a liability. It's your choice to stop being a liability. May you not be a prayer project. May you not tell the ministry, your pastor, let's go into prayer. The Lord must give us money for this project. Pray! Baba, baba, baba. Angalia vile pastor analia. Leta pesa ya mjengo. Tuna vuruta. Tuna leta. And you're also praying there? It's not pride. Then why are they following you? Laban looked at Jacob and he said, I'm certain God has blessed me for your sake. Put it there. So some are not men. Some, may you not just be a man, a woman, Don't be a pastor. This generation has issues with pastors. So don't be one. Remain a man of God. Remain a servant of God. There's something about a servant of God. There's something about a man of God. And Laban said to, to, to him, please, stay. Laban begged. We are begging people to remain in church. Because they have lost sight of what is there. This was not Jacob begging to find a place where to collect type. It was Laban, the rich man, begging him, please don't leave. May men get to a place they perceive that to try to move away from you is to try to move away from answers. 
there's a compelling grace that God wants to release over your life. I know what pastors pray for is money, but it is the least thing you should ever pray for. May a compelling grace come on you and may God double my own as well. Mama, I pray that we are getting into days when grace will speak. We are getting into days that you will do things that grace will speak. I pray for all of us as men of God, as we have humbled ourselves here, that Lord, may you distinguish our lives by grace. May men see it. May men perceive it. May we stop being preachers. May we stop intimidating people to give. May we stop intimidating people to help us. May we stop coming up with tactics. May men see a God that cannot be denied. Laban told Jacob, Laban said to him, Please stay. If I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. One time I was pastoring a man and he became very arrogant and proud. And I don't want to give the rest of the story. And he called all his children when the rabbi met the road. And he fell down there and he said, told his children, even if I die, I called this man to tell you that this is the man that gave me wealth. Yet I'm a stupid child. I behaved stupid, but this is the man that gave it to me. May men look at their relationship with you and say things that began in their lives when they met you. There are too many pastors. There are too many churches. We are not looking for pastors and we are not looking for churches. We are looking for an experience. We are looking for one man that can enter a city and people can tell that, the, that God is in the city. When they entered the city, they turned the city upside down and men shouted when a cripple walked, the gods have come down among men. They stopped men from sacrificing. Paul Rain, they, they were dragging things to sacrifice. He Ndiyo utajua mungu anataka utoe. Funga macho sasa. Ondoa kili yako hapa. Fikiria. Stop all those gimmicks. Unaponya maza, anataka uwe sabu tano. Angalia maisha yako vile mungu wamekubariki. Uwane nini utatolea buwana. Stop all those gimmicks. Money will happen to you. It will happen to you. What keeps me moving every day is my desire to see the Bible come alive. It bothers me in my private communion with God that Lord, can this truth become true in my life? Or is it just in the Bible? Can I experience it? It bothers me. I don't want to preach a good message. I want to bring the reality of scripture. Is it true? Is it real? Can I taste it? The Bible says it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and who have tasted the good word of God. The word is not for reading. The word can be tasted. Unaeza in your real life. Doesn't the Bible say taste and see that God, God can be tasted and God can be seen. Usiuburi mungu mwenye haukuonja. Hata supu hau kuonja. Uli ubiri tu mkavu mkavu hivi, ukakufa ki ujinga ujinga hivi, ukaenda. Mungu mwenye hau kuonja. Ndi unafika mbinguni unaona streets of gold, you get slain in the spirit. Say Illuminati has come here. Because you never saw it on earth. Gold will become normal to you. Amen. I said gold will become normal to you. Amen. You will not pray for prosperity. It will not be something to speak about. It will become a reality in your life. Somebody shout, I take the grace. I didn't hear you say it again, I take the grace. I speak over your life. May God become tangible. When you leave this conference, may the leaders you left in your ministry see the tangibility of God, the reality of God, the fact that God can be tested, the fact that God can be touched, the fact that it can become real, it can become true. Please sit down. Sit down. Please sit. Give me that in the Good News translation. I'm about to close. Now, Bring the new King James first, Hebrews 6. Nothing frustrates like preaching what you cannot taste. This Bible is not a story. It's a revelation of the glories of God. 
Don't preach it as a storybook. Don't look for a message to go and preach. Release your life. Tafuna sehemu fulani ya Mungu mpaka iwe real kwa maisha yako. Ili ukitapika unatapika Mungu. Kiingia kwa mji ukinyamba umenyamba Mungu. The shadow of Peter was casting out devils. So everything about you can do something supernatural. Renard Bonke was in a hotel. All the alcohol in the bar turned into water. They brought another truck of alcohol. It turned into water. Bonke was in town. T.L. Osborne was in Uganda. He brought the beautiful story of redemption at around 3 p.m. Wearing very simple West African short thing with Daisy Osborne. And he spoke for a few minutes the beautiful story of redemption. When he got to in the name, Jesus showed up in the meeting three times. Showed the crowd of millions his nail-scarred hands. A mountain of wheelchairs and crutches were left behind. Because a man was not giving a story. A man was a man of God. One of the elderly men of God that sat under T.L. Osborne told me, oh Lord, the man came to Kisumu. I'm an African man. I'm a Luo man. I can't be convinced. I can't be convinced easily. If you preach in Kisumu and people give millions, God called you. Because Kisumu people don't just buy things. They have to analyze it academically, financially, theoretically. They have to try and establish the current money laws that exist. So if you convince them, you are called. You say, the law, I'm my mother's son. I was in the meeting. I said, this white man, does he carry a God that can heal a cripple? So he went and sat next to cripples because he wanted to prove. He said, the law is not a complicated preacher. He just gave the beautiful story of redemption. But although that man is bad when it comes to the name, although he's just talking, Olo, when he got to in the name, <laughs> I didn't see the cripples again. I saw them in front testifying. I went back home crying. I said, Lord, what is this? <laughs> it sounds sweet in vernacular. He said, Olo, in the name Ka. I was weeping. I don't want to beg with the Bible in my hands. Make me a prophet. Build me into a man. I don't want to fight on Facebook with the human beings. I'm fighting because they have left with the tithe of 2000. You are bitter all your life. I want God. Look at this. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened that have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 5. And have tasted the good word of God. The word of God is tasted. And there are powers you have to taste of the age to come. If you don't go to heaven when you are alive, chances you are not going there when you die are very high. Because heaven is a dimension that you transition into and come back when you are alive. If you have never gone there as a preacher, you are in danger. That as a man of God, all you dream is that you are going on a long call and wake up and begin praying. Shada! Shada! Mashetani acho! Back to sender! My brother, get saved! Get saved! Get saved! And yet you will go and church. Paka ikanza kukufukuza. A man of God. Paka ina kufukuza kwa. A man of God. <laughs> Baba, can't the devil recognize the fact that you are called? I perceive that God has blessed me. The next level of a crowd shift into your ministry will be on the basis of the experience you have with God. Men will say things like, when I began to sit and listen to this man, something shifted in my life. I pray for us. May we not be pastors. May we not beg with our coats betraying redemption. 
May we not be beggars in cities where we have been sent. May we not beg from politicians. May we not beg from the rich in the church. May God become a reality in our lives. There is a place I want to bring us to. Tonight then we pray. Genesis 19.29 Lira badada shodo kari polo stibarina Lord, I serve a God. I serve a God. This God, my brother, it doesn't matter how poor your father was, those demons will realize that God called you. It doesn't matter how people have ended in the ministry where you come from. Those devils will recognize that you came to this ground. It doesn't matter what a man has never bought where you are coming from. From this meeting, if Jesus died and resurrected and anointed me as his servant, something is shifting in the spirit. I perceive that God, please, 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 let's sit for a while so that I can close. I was preaching in a ministry. The man of God there is, is an apostle of money. I saw people preaching. I was afraid to take the podium. Then I preached Wednesday night. And Thursday, Thursday night, he told me people don't ask people here for money and they give. I can mention to you ministers that are this is not a ground you can do that you broke it you have something territories will recognize you it is not about how hard the place is it's about what you carry on your life god 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 when you carry god you don't complain about the idols in potiphar's house that potiphar let us take a repentance first and reverse the gods of your house so you are taking potiphar outside in the night instead of potiphar sleeping to see your god potiphar is running around the house that you are taking potiphar through prophetic action stop all this sarcasm that god brought one billionaire in your house umemchosha na anointing oil zunguka hivi zunguka hivi ruka hivi ruka hivi tunafanya deliverance mm -mm. the man ought to come into your presence and after one Sunday, go back home and sleep. Say, Pastor, I've not slept in a long time because he met a man of God. Go back and stop being common. People have no value for common things. You are too common to carry grace. Look at this. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. Lot was the one in trouble but God could not see him. Lot was the one in trouble but he had nothing that guarantees his deliverance. He is also God's creation. Was Lot not created by God? He was created by God. He's in trouble. The cities are being overthrown. But he had no right to be delivered. He had no right to receive some things. He had no right to experience God. God had to come based on a man that had right into him. And when God remembered that one time Lot related with Abraham, God remember Lot is in trouble, but God remembered Abraham. And when God thought about Abraham, said, Hey, deliver that man. He's connected to Abraham. They are men. You can't die because you are connected to them. There are graces people enjoy, not because they prayed. They are connected to a man that God recognizes. Can I tell you the truth? God does not recognize everyone. By the way, it's a bad statement, but it's true. That's why one man can say, ah, And one man will walk in and demons can't help themselves because heaven does not respond to men the same. 
in the journey of your ministerial life, refuse to be a man that is numbered among the number. Build your edge. Build your grace. Be cautious who is around you. Don't relate with people who dishonor what you honor. It's the simplest way to kill what you are looking for. Look at this. That God remembered Abraham and delivered Lord. May God bring you to a place that when God remembers you, he preserves your mother. May God bring you to a place where if he remembers you, he delivers your brother. May God bring you to a place where if you lay your hands on a man, the preservation on your life falls on them. May men begin to discover you have something. May God bring you there. Now, as I go down, so God remembered Abraham and delivered Lot. Are you forgetting that when Abimelech took Abraham's wife, God came to Abimelech and God was talking to Abimelech and Abimelech was explaining to God that the man deceived me that this is his sister. God said, I know. When all this was happening, I was aware. He said, Lord, you know I'm a man of integrity. God said, I also know. But return the man's wife and let the man pray for you. God is talking to you. So which prayer is the man going to pray? Now that I'm talking to you, God, which other prayer does the man need to pray? God said, go to Abraham, let him pray for you. Or else you are a dead man. No man touches what is Abraham's and leaves. Even me, God, I can testify. The man is a prophet. People are saying they are prophets. There's no day Abraham said he's a prophet. But God looked at Abraham and he said, this man is a prophet. People testify. But God testified on behalf of Job. God told the devil, have you seen Job? The devil told God, I have seen him. There's a realm where you are not discussed by men. You are discussed by God in conjunction with the devil. Your matters are not on earth. Your wealth is not being discussed on earth. That meeting was holding in a supernatural realm. And the devil began to testify. And the devil said, you have protected him. You have guarded everything he has. As Satan, I have a testimony of protection that there are people who are protected. Job is one of them. Lord, that I can tell you. You are still fighting gossipers. Stop being a pastor. Be a man of God. Because they are, when Moses died, look at those who attended his funeral. Nobody knows where his grave is to this day. But there are two people who attended his funeral. Satan had to attend. And the archangel Michael had to attend. Be a man of God. Come out of those kind of battles. Get out of those battles. Be a man of God. See where men of God are discussed. A man of God died before his time. A donkey could not kill. A lion could not kill a donkey. Because even though he was dead, he put a barrier between a lion and a donkey. There's something about grace. There's something about carrying God. There's no stingy man. There's only little grace. There's no hard town. It is only hard to seek God. God remains in every city. Results remain everywhere. One time I was preaching somewhere. I won't mention the name of the city. <laughs> people gave the second last day. I told them you have seen nothing. The following day, people called people to come and see people giving. Ilikuwa cinema. People called people. <laughs> come and see.
you will carry grace that will kill your bitterness from this conference. Give me the sons of Skeva as I close. Demons recognize spiritual relationships. Demons know. You cannot deceive them. Actually, one thing with the devil is that the devil knows who is allowed to cast him out. One thing with altars is that they know who is allowed to destroy them. The devil is aware not every man can cast him out. Look at this. The sons of Skeva went and told demons, we cast you out in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches. The demon said, okay. But we are going to tell you something that Paul we know and Jesus we know. But you guys, would you mind introducing yourselves? You said you cast us out. You did well, you mentioned Paul, you mentioned Jesus, and we have no battle with that because we know Paul, we know Jesus, but you that is trying to cast that out, where did you get the audacity and the guts? Who sent you? That those are questions that some principalities are asking over certain ministries. Who sent you to this city? Breakthroughs don't just happen. This is how they happen. Also, there were seven sons of Skeva, a Jewish chief priest, who uh, did so, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Clothes remained. The guys were naked and they ran naked. Trying to be a man of God, they were not. <laughs> Results are not very easy to copy. Results are produced by truth. There's something you have to become. You see that man that came to my office? Don't dare those kind of people. They may shoot you. They may embarrass you. Build until it is comfortable for you to ask for a certain offering without feeling uncomfortable. I was preaching somewhere and I said, I'm going to give 15 minutes. I need people who can give 1 million by tomorrow. People almost broke their legs going upstairs, the stairs to meet me in the office. The host pastor looked at it. I said, what is this? They were fighting to come and give it by tomorrow. He said, what is this? Said, man of God, one million. I said, don't just ask. Don't copy anybody. There are things that are not copied. There are things you better be sure you can defend. May God bring us there. I pray may God bring us there. Amen. With all humility, I stand before this church and I say, I need people who will give one million and they give. Yet we have been trained that you need to go and look for a certain man of God to come and tell your people to give. Why are you afraid of money? Because your relationship with it is not proper. Why do pastors fear money? Because there's something you fear about it. There's a place you are not dealing truly with it. There's an amount of it you give, you'll have a relationship with it. It will obey. It will honor you. It will obey you. Things are caused to obey. They don't just obey. Pastors, my fellow ministers of God, Paul looked at the Philippians and Paul told them, there, there's a God of men, but there's how a man's God 
can work for you. You know why God becomes a man's God? It's because he wants to help men. Look at this. This may sound controversial, but look at this. Paul looked at the Philippian church and Paul told them something. I've received from you the things that Brother Epaphras brought that you sent to me. And when I looked at them, there's a way I can define them. There's a name I can give them. It is a well-pleasing uh, offering. Paul called it uh, an acceptable sacrifice that is well pleasing to God. I can tell it is pleasing to God and now my God. So Paul said all these things men have said from Genesis to Revelation. Elisha coming to the Jordan and saying, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Paul concluded by saying, let me show you how another man's God can become your God. There's a way men have dealt with God. There's a way men handle and massage God. The reason I never despise any preacher is because you don't know how they deal with God in the night. And that's where you can be a man of God and the God of another man of God can wreak havoc in your life. Because there's a way he has handled him which you have not handled him. And that's a mystery we'll never understand until tomorrow. That's where now, as a man of God, anointed by God, you begin to honor other men of God, anointed by God, because kuna vile, wana handle mungu wao, na wepia una mungu, na wepia mungu wao, anaweza kukwanza. You can find yourself in trouble caused by the God of another man, and you're also a man of God. So Paul begins to give us the formula and that's what I want to drop then I pray. Gives us the formula that there is a way another man's God can work for others. When Elijah was in Zarephath, he told the woman as truly as the Lord my God lives. The bean of flour shall not be exhausted and the jar of oil will not run dry till the day God will send rain on the earth. So long as there is no rain, there will be no dryness in your life. The woman was about to fear. Elijah told him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Wapendwa, Inaitajika tu bebe mungu anayendoa uoga. Do you know that there are some of us here that if a man runs to us very desperate carrying 10 million you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be afraid to receive it. Because you are not sure if your God can stop it. Can stop what they have run to you for. There are some of us that when we leave this place, dead children will be thrown in your office and they'll come alive. We are not called into a game. We are called to prove God. Can I tell you something? There are realms you will not climb by theory. Your God will have to demonstrate himself. And something is opening up in your life. Within the few minutes I'm here, that your God will demonstrate himself. In the name of Jesus. Okay? Look at this. Look at this. So Paul, Paul kind of gives us just a simple formula that there is a way we can make the God of another man work for us. Wangapi mna kubaliana nami ya kwamba watu wana mungu? Umewai, umewai gunwe yo, kuna watu wana mungu. Ndiyo wei pia unai, lakini kuna watu wana mungu kiwango flani. God is in levels. Look at this. So Paul says, Indeed I have all and abound. I am full now. Having received from Epaphroditus the things that were sent from you. A sweet smelling aroma. 
an acceptable sacrifice. Someone will preach to you and tell you, sacrifices ended with Jesus. But the man who gave us three quarters of the doctrines of our faith is still confirming that there is something called a sacrifice post the cross that still works. He said, I've received from Epaphroditus the things that were sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice. It is well-pleasing to God. And this is what he said. And based on that, my God, Paulo alitembea na yeye akafika mahali akawa na ujasiri ya kwamba huyu ni Mungu wangu. <laughs> Said my God. He didn't say <laughs> Don't let people be quick to say pastor pray our God will be faithful tell him correct that one first. Because I don't know the one you are loyal to. So don't bring me in very quickly. Ati mchungaji Mungu wetu na usiingie haraka haraka. Mimi najua Mungu wangu. Sijui wako. Najua Mungu wangu. Na kuna siku nilisema wako akishindwa jaribu huyu wangu. Wale 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 manabii wa Baal walikuwa na Mungu wao na Elia akawaambia acha niwapatie nafasi ya kwanza. Iteni Mungu wenu. Wakaita wakaita. Elia akasema pengine ameenda soko. Ongezeni sauti, ongeza volume, wakaongeza volume. Wakaanza kujikata na mawe. Elia akasema pengine analala muamshe, wakaamini Mungu wao analala, wakaanza kumuamsha wakamwamsha wakamwamsha nimekuja ni kuambie mpendwa mimi na wewe tuondoke kwa kuwa na Mungu ambaye anakamuliwa kama ngombe ambaye anafungwa miguu kwanza alafu ndiye anakamuliwa and Thomas wa kidogo tunangoja kumkamua kesho it is not the kind of god we should serve when it came to proving god elijah engaged a weapon called sacrifice and when it was the hour of the evening sacrifice somebody say sacrifice the, the hour of the evening sacrifice elijah stepped out elijah said the altar has been repaired the bulls have been cut add water on the altar that's the day we use water to put out fire but that's the day that fire ate water because God was about to be proved. And Elijah knew something about his God. He repaired the altar and placed a sacrifice there. And he, those guys had been calling from morning till evening. Elijah stepped forward. And said that it may be known that everything I have done. I've done in obedience to you. Now let fire fall. Jesus prayed at the grave of Lazarus. He didn't pray. He said, for the sake, Father, thank you. Death warrants a thank you that you hear me always. But for the sake of these men that are standing here, for their sake, there's a boldness in grace that is coming on you. Men of God, there's a boldness in grace that is coming on us. There's a boldness in grace that you will tell some men you will not, not sell this property to anybody else but me. And it will stand. There's a boldness in grace. And Elijah called and the fire fell. Let's read this. Then I drop a few things I leave. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of the... Uh, no, no, it's not that one. Give us the Mount Camel experience. Not that one. So he stepped forward at the hour of the evening sacrifice. And he said, Lord, that it may be known that all these things I've done, I've done in your name and with your instruction. Okay? Are we there? So let's look at it and we close. Look at this. So Elijah answered and said to them, if ah no no <laughs> no see you, you no pastor has found it yet okay pastor you have it 
First Kings 18. You can read it. So he stepped forward at the hour of the evening sacrifice. We have it now. Let's read it. One, two, three, go. And he answered, it came to pass, at the time of the evening, evening what? That Elijah the prophet came and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. That's the day Maui Lichomeka. So, Paul says, the Apostle Paul says, I have received from Epaphras the things sent from you. A sweet smelling aroma. An acceptable sacrifice. Well pleasing to God. You have done something that has pleased God. Well pleasing to God. And now my God. My God. Number one. If you are writing. There's a dimension you are accessing by sacrifice. And it gives me now the audacity to summarize and say, what is this sacrifice that Elijah laid that Paul was talking about? Number one, it is something that you put into an anointing. An anointing you put nothing into can never follow you. It is a principle of the anointing. Paul called them things sent from you. The sacrifice is the contact point between you and an anointing. There are anointings you have desired and they have never become real in your life because you have not yet understood this thing called sacrifice. It might interest you to know that spiritual relationships are not established by empty rhetorics. They are not built in euphoria. Any spiritual relationship that is built on empty words and familiarity leaves men drier than they were before. I pray you will not only say you came, you'll have something to show for your coming. Can I hear an amen? amen? Number two then, this sacrifice is the aroma that tickles a man's God. Or if a man serves a demon, it tickles his demon. Paul called it a sweet smelling aroma. It carried a distinctive smell. It was spicy. Men of God, I pray that God takes us from just giving to begin to give spicy gifts, salty gifts, seasoned giving, rich giving, tasty giving. Giving that changes an atmosphere. Giving that has the kind of flavor that commands favor. A man's God ought to smell your sacrifice if his God will help you. A man's God has the ability to smell. A man's God is fed. A man's God is ministered to. And when the food satisfies this, the, 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 the God of the man, the man can tell, Paul says, uh, it is an acceptable sacrifice based on how I walk with my God. What I have received from you men has satisfied my God. And now my God, listen, great men don't just touch some things. You can be around them. This thing, baraka. man of God, say something about me. A man of God is not a radio station. Even your own parents don't just say some things. Paul called it an acceptable offering. 
Which means not all sacrifices are welcome. Not all sacrifices can satisfy. Not all sacrifices can command the respect of heaven. Not all sacrifices can be tolerated by heaven. There are blind sacrifices. Which the Bible calls evil in Malachi 1.8. There are lame sacrifices. The Bible calls evil as well. There are sacrifices that can't even please a governor. There are sacrifices that cannot win the favor of a world leader. What about the move of God? There are blemished sacrifices. And sacrifices that have been changed. That attract curses according to Malachi 1.14. You know why God bragged about Abraham? <laughs> he told Abraham, Abraham, do not kill your son. For now I know that you fear me. Because you did not withhold your son, your only son from me. In blessing. God doesn't just say he'll bless people. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying. I will multiply you. Men of God, before God puts something on you that men fear, he will confront something in your life that you are afraid of doing to open you up for grace. Men don't walk with God while they hold their idols. You know your idol. Every man of God here has an idol. Plus me that is here. I don't know if I still have. God killed my idols. <laughs> God killed them so mercilessly. Some of them died that I became sick. There are things I gave and got malaria. Because it was an idol. There is a rare man will never see your ministry. Till your idol is down. That boy Isaac was Abraham's idol. Giving money would have never been a problem for Abraham. The man was rich. But God knew what he feared. The boy that carried the promise. God knows what we value. Even if we pretend in tongues, he knows. He knows there's money you can touch and there's money you cannot touch. And he comes for what you cannot touch. He came for us. Slaughtered us. To open us for grace. Paul said. The reason I can touch my God. And call him. Is because you people presented. Not giving a sacrifice. Abraham now I know. That you fear me. Because you are willing to destroy. What is an idol in your life. This is what you have waited all your life. That was not easy to touch. And when I asked for it, you didn't hold it back. Now I know you fear me. In blessing. Jehovah Jireh is not just God's name. Jehovah Jireh is a revelation of a man's dealing with God. So if you don't have your mountain where you have wrestled with your God, stop all those prayers. We come to you, Jehovah Jireh. We come to you, Jehovah Nisi. We come to you, El Shaddai. We come to you, Sikenu. So you think you are being spiritual. No, you are trying to use grammar. Heaven does not respond to grammar. Oh, fundamental, superstitious, hermeneutical God. As thy servant speaketh to you. God doesn't speak in James English. God hears the language of sacrifice. Yes. Abraham, now I know. Because when you touch it, God knows. There are things that where you are seated, you are shaking. You, your heart is taking you to a, your idol. It is the gateway of grace. I've killed my own several times. And because you are a man of God, I'm about to close. Now listen. Listen. So Paul said, and my God. You see, there's a need that will continue in your life together with the fact that you still have that idol. You are driving the car, but you still have a need that the car cannot meet. Yes, you have the land, but you still have a need that the land cannot meet. And you are praying. And Paul said, you guys have needs, but I have a God that can meet the need. But there's a principle. 
Okay. Now that I've seen your sacrifice, my God will now supply, not part. There's just one thing God needs to do for a pastor here. And everything he'll ever look for is in that one thing. God knows what to hit and poverty will not dare you the rest of your life. And there are things you may touch in prayer, but it is not the solution. Some of you think you need a car. It's not a car you need. Some of you think you need land. It's not land you need. Some of you think you need a house. It's not a house you need. Some of you think, ah, I, I need to travel. It's not to travel you need. You need grace. And everything you'll ever look for is in grace. I flew into one city and I walked into a jewelry shop and I saw a particular watch. They were selling it one million. I loved it. Said, ah! It was about a million or something. I said, my God. I could afford it, but I have needs that are more urgent. I can't buy that kind of a watch. But I desired it. Then I flew to another city and I was about to, I preached, I finished, and someone came to me with the exact watch. I said, man of God, please, allow me to partake of the anointing. I only desired it. And someone bought it in another city. It was not the watch I needed. It is grace I need. It's not a car you need. It is God you need. And you need to know how to keep God. It was not the soup that Esau needed. Esau needed grace. But Jacob knew that I can use what I have to eternally have what this man is playing with. When a man carries God, that God is tickled. You know how Benny Hinn's God is tickled? There's a way they play that song to a certain place. Because mungu wake huenda hivyo. Wewe ni mungu wake. Wewe unazajaribu hiyo, you give up. You try singing hallelujah. 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 You can wear a white suit and do that. Now, say me a partner, something is wrong somewhere. Because your God is not wired like that. Uyo ni mungu wake. Ni na mungu wangu. There are men who cannot preach without singing. I don't sing. There's what tickles what I carry. And I know. When a man carries grace, he knows. You can't deceive him, he knows. So, Paul said, my God will supply all. There's one thing you do and you handle all. Look at this. It is a pleasant offering. It is the hand that moves the supply of heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, heaven's supply is only guaranteed where a sacrifice is a lifestyle. Heaven's provision is only the lot of sacrificial ministers. Heaven does not guarantee reinforcement to everyone. You can cry until tomorrow and it's like heaven is quiet. Stinginess is the mother of helplessness in ministry. When you hurt sacrifice, you will live like heaven is a lie and does not exist. It is the answer to all your needs. My God will supply all your need. Many are needy because a sacrifice is strange to them and offends them. It is giving that stops a needy life. Give your way out of shame. Give your way out of being a slave of members. Give till God responds. As a minister, the grace that will cause men to honor you with things is built at the place of your own sacrificial life. Paul said, my God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Build your God. Have a God. Let men look for you because they know you have a God.
don't just, don't just respond that a door is open. May your God create space for you. Have something that is tangible that a generation can relate with. One time I was in a meeting and they were discussing, well, the meeting is big, the whole place is jam-packed, and they were saying, who is going to receive the offerings? And it's a great man of God who was about to speak. And somebody whispered and said, sir, you see all these bills we have? If a law takes offerings, you'll pay them before the meeting begins. I said, what do you mean? He said, we are telling you the truth. I pray and I want to pray for us. Listen, this thing is not for me. It is not about me. And as I've said from the beginning until now, we are brothers. That's why God has gathered us here. But the reason God gathered us is that God takes what men need and puts on a man. That principle doesn't change. And I am convinced more than ever before that when I next see some of us here, you will greet me and in your hands will be a key of a car nobody ever dreamt you can drive. You will greet me and with you will be a picture of a home nobody thought you will leave. Whichever city where you live, God is moving you from the realm of commoners to the realm where men live. I came to speak to you under the influence of the grace that I carry on my life. I came tonight to tell you that God wants to shift something in your life. And Paul looked at them and Paul said, I have looked at what you have done. I have analyzed what you have done and my God has been tickled and I am convinced that my God will supply all your need. My God has the land that you need. My God has the capacity to pay for the building that you need. My God has the capacity to give you the money that you need. And Paul said, my God will supply all your need. Because every time a sacrifice is mentioned, the next person you see is God. God spoke to me in three categories and I'm not going to raise an offering. I'm going to throw it on you. Some of us probably are leaving tonight. How I pray that we dine tomorrow in the royal banqueting Sunday because something will fall tomorrow that is very different, that is very unusual. Lord, you know how much I honor your servants. It is, it is so hard to preach to you. You don't know how many times I died to come and preach to you. You don't know how much I'm preaching to you with respect and all honor. Because there are some of you here that in the next five years, you'll be shaking a city in a way that has never been seen before. There are some of us in the next two years, men will wonder which name is that. Because God has called us to a mountain of sacrifice. You didn't come by yourself. There is something that God prepared. That God spoke to me myself. And he said, as you speak to them, I'm calling you as well to a higher level of sacrifice. Listen, there are three people God spoke to me about as I was preparing to come here. There are some of us ministers, we are going to pay the tithe of a million because God is opening the one million realm for you. It may, it may, it may affect something heavy in your life. But God who sent you led me to tell you you need to pay a tithe of a million as a commitment for what is opening up in your life. There are those that God told me to tell to pay the tithe of half a million because that's the realm God is opening up for them. That's what God told me. I will not tell you what he told me because it is heavy. I don't want to talk about it. He told me, son, give me that tithe for what I want to open in your life. You are not leaving a meeting. You will live to testify. You will live to talk about it. The rest of your life, these things begins, this thing begins a mark in your life. Those are the realms and the dimensions God spoke to me about. He said, there are servants of God that a million is about to become something you play with. It is something that even if you are going to invest or spend it in your ministry, you'll just find it as a way of going and coming, we're going and coming, going and coming, because God is opening it up as a realm in your life and ministry. 
It's going to be so easy. And there are those of us here that God is opening the realm of 500. Last but not least, it is amazing there are ministers in this meeting that Elf Miamoja can make you retire from ministry. It's not an insult. I know how heavy it is because I've been there. And God said, you need to open realms of hundreds so that people will just begin to deal with you. Somebody comes and drops a hundred. Somebody comes and drops a hundred. Just like that. God said, you need to open that realm so that you get out of 10, 20, 30, 40. No. Open that realm. Pay the tithe of a hundred thousand. Do it. And see God. I wish I had all the time to teach these things. But I believe the shortest I've taught about money, the shortest I've talked about it, you will see results in your life. Can I hear an amen? amen. During the pandemic, I had not less than eight pastors, eight men of God, that wiped their accounts and came all the way and said, God told me to bring everything I have. One, and all of them were not less than 100. When the pandemic was at the heat and God told them, this is why you will survive. Go to the man and surrender this to him and you'll survive. They were all pastors. I said, God, why? He said, not because you are special. I've given you the grace to share with my servants, to share with my people, not only servants, to share with people. You hear these testimonies all the time. It is something that I also give into. That's why God has given us our own realm that we are breaking into. So I don't want to mention it here. Because I don't want it to look like I, Lord, every, this thing has a cross. Can you imagine it was pandemic? My pastors were saying, what? And they were pastors. If a pastor gives, it is God. You are a pastor, isn't it? <laughs> if a pastor gives, it is God. Some of you, okay, okay, after I gave away the $10,000, a man of God began to call. Pring, pring, pring. So one of my pastors called back. He said, what is it? He said, why are you people stopping me? God has told me to bring my car and give it. And God said, if I give it, he'll give me the money to buy the land. I wanted to sell it, but God said, no, go and give it. And I'm not trying to psych you to part with your heart and money. There's a realm. One, I'm in your life as your brother. Number two, I'm in your life that I may not enjoy alone. That we may, you may enjoy what I enjoy. God is taking us to a place of that of it. Magari utaendesha bill alone. You'll change them and all of them have logbooks. If God can give you wealth and you have the fear of God and you love you and you pray the way you are praying, the next level of ministry in your life is not, going, is not going to be just an ordinary word. Your impact will not be denied. I'm going to pray. I've given the word that God gave me. And let me emphasize. He didn't say take it and go and use it in a project in your ministry. But you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. You don't have to that one I'm going to pick from your hands. I'm not only going to eat it. Isaac told Esau, go bring it that I may eat it, that my soul may bless you. You need the blessing more than that money. You need it. I will put it in that, you know, for now I haven't allowed us to go and see what is happening. But I'll let you know when you'll start seeing pictures on Facebook of the thing, then I'll now allow you to go and see what is happening. I'm going to put it there. There are some of you that came, you came from a rented place in a semi-permanent structure. In less than one year, you are coming back to the conference with a permanent building that is your own. That you are built for God. Kuna sarakasi zitaisha kwa maisha yako. 
those who knew you in the city you are coming from will look at you and say, ah, ah, there's something about this man. <clears throat> For those who don't believe in me, that's how Oloa Mempatia Ilekitu. It can be given. Philippians 1, verse 7. Original, thy and thou. Then I pray. Men of God, I don't have to tell you to write a note. Don't even write a note. No, no, no. No, no. Wakati utakona fryer BM, I will not be there. There's something about a BMW. Sema Toyota ilienda. Wa! Ilikuwa chungu lakini hii mke wangu kaa kidogo. There are some of us here usijadharau. Ukikanyaga S class. Hautapanda ndege ukija mkutano. Pastor Chris, when an S-class hits the road from Bungoma, you don't want a plane again. <sighs> the music in that thing, you just want to serve God. In fact, you, you'll have to live far away from town so that you enjoy it to church. You will never complain about distance again because you want to enjoy the thing. I don't know who else to speak over. Brethren, Peter looked at the cripple. He said, I don't know, John may have something. Let me talk for myself. Gold and silver, I don't have. But what I have, I don't know about John. What I have, I give you. <laughs> so I don't know, you also have stuff. I don't know, but I'm talking about what I have. A lady sold her gas cylinder and her fridge and trekked from Embakasi to Jogo Road altar. I was preaching on dominion over altar. Ten days of dominion over altars and left the money on the, the on the altar and walked back. I said, How are you going to eat? He said, I will not eat till the day God remembers me. And six months later, I dedicated her brand new Mercedes Benz in another black car. Because that thing is there. It is there. I'm not teaching you materialism. But how many of you pastors can testify? That no matter how anointed you are, if there's no evidence about your anointing, <laughs> how many of you have gone to preach somewhere and you realize that the offering went down because of the way you came? God is packaging you. God is putting you together. So I don't know your realm. I will hang around for just a few minutes. I don't need us to write anything. But in case you need it to be a covenant, then you can send a text to 0726 and please include your name. Because I would want to save your name. Because I know I will dedicate that car. Amen. If you choose to. Amen. Bernard, my son, we were talking one day in the morning and I asked him, do you drive? He said, he looked at his wife there, first of all laughed. He said, what is this man talking about? But as God would have it, I dedicated this car. I was so shocked when the pastor from Diani told me he was in my meeting in Wukunda and God healed him of a breathing condition. He wasn't a pastor, then God called him into ministry. I was shocked. Their testimony is all over this place. Above all, I'm not better than you. But the truth I can tell you with all humility is that God has given me something for your ministry. I pray that if Jesus tarries, I will visit some of the ministries here. I will come. Is it Pastor Johnson from Kajado? Had a great, he shared with me a testimony. I was shaking. I said, you mean all that? He said, sir, I was healed as you spoke. And God has given me this and this and this. I want you to come for one day so that you bless where I'm going to build the sanctuary. He was here in the meeting. I think maybe he's left. You will testify. Grace is real. So you want to write it, Pastor? Me, man of God, I'm breaking the million thing. This is what I'm doing. I'm either doing it tomorrow, now, or whichever way. I don't know. It's between you and God.
you breaking the 500 rem is between you and God. You breaking the <laughs> 100 is between you and God. Let nobody force you on this. You are a man of God. You can hear God. You know what made you come. Allow me to pray because time is gone. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm so humbled by your grace. I've spoken to your servants in the integrity of my heart. Lord, may they not just preach giving. If there is what you allowed on my life called grace, then this is the night that I call all of them to the place of sharing in grace. Let's open our hands, all of us, men of God. I pray that every hand open in your presence, in the next 24-7, signs will begin. Tonight, as they sleep, signs will begin. Before we leave this conference, there will be a man called to go and pick a car. Before we leave this conference, there will be a man out of obedience, getting a message, take the land, have it, we have given it. Before the end of this conference, there's a turn around. This is why you told me to call them. That the grace you bestowed on my life may become a reality in their lives, in their ministries, in their businesses, in what they do, in what they carry around, in what they have invested their lives to do. Lord, take the grace and put it on the obedience and let your name be glorified and testimonies begin from right now to the glory and to the honor of your name so shall it be it can never be otherwise the dear man of God come just come forgive me I don't pray long prayers I don't know your covenant with God but I release you with what was in this conference the change will be evident. As you travel, you will never be the same. So shall it be. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Mama comes to release us. Put your hands together for the Lord. Celebrate your God and my God. Celebrate your Father and my Father. Celebrate for your next level. Celebrate for your next realm. Celebrate for your next dimension. You are broken into something. You have entered something. You have begun something. A turnaround has begun in your life. We can do better than that for Jesus. For our victory. For our deliverance. Let's give him glory. Let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let us, let us give him praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you have given us. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the healings that are taking place. Thank you for whatever you have done in the media world. We thank you. Those who followed this conference from online, we say carry your own miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. May your life never be the same. May you testify from now henceforth. May your people say, I want your God because of what you have had tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for victory. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. Thank you, Jesus, for your power. Thank you, Jesus, for grace. For grace is better than any other thing. Thank you. You have followed. You are blessed. Let's hear from you right through that number on your screen. Let us know if we, the service has been a blessing. There is a prayer you need. The numbers are running on your screen. May God bless you until next time. From here, King's Gathering Church, let's beat the media world. Bye-bye. Let's give a clap offering for them as they receive the blessing. In the